here we choose a coordinate system t x1 x2 and 3 x3 and so t is the time coordinate x1 x2 x3 are coordinate on sigma all right um so now uh what, what we can uh write is is the following so then of course um this na equals to we can expand na using coordinate system into a coordinate basis so it is an an i consequential x i and a so here i is from one to one three so be, here you you an, an a doesn't involve time time coordinates is because well an, an i an a is a it's a vector tangent to sigma purely spatial vector so it only can be expanded by using spatial coordinates um okay so here uh, now we can consider the metric component in terms of this coordinate. So firstly, T T T T T T equals to T A B um, partial partial T A partial partial T A. Well, and this partial partial T A is just the T A. Okay, so this equals to T A B. So we use this decomposition. N, N A, N plus N A, N B, N B. Okay. And now we can expand. Uh, so first term. So when we making a, a contraction of N A N B with G A B, you just get minus one because of the normalization of the normal vector. So the first term is just n squared, yeah. and secondly, if you make n a to um, n b, uh, um, you you will get just get zero because because n a is a normal vector and this capital n a this shift vector is is tangent to sigma. So with, therefore, I mean when you expand this uh, this formula, there's no cross term. So n a n b uh, in the product contact with g a b, uh, you will get zero. Therefore, uh, the the last term is just the G A B G A B N A N B okay. so N A N A. All right. So, and in terms of coordinate, in, in terms of coordinate uh, component, you get N square. You get just N square plus N I. N I. All right. So, uh, so this is the G T T. So now similarly we can consider GTI. Yeah. GTI is G A B G A B. Okay. So again, G A B. Doctor Han? Yeah, okay. Um do you mean minus n squared? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So N A plus N A and uh, then A. Okay. Again, the first term, uh, the first term, sorry, this is B. Um, you will get zero because N A is perpendicular to the hypersurface. So N A partial uh, partial uh, X I B will be zero. And but you get second term. Yeah, and you apply this expansion. Um, so what you got is just uh, uh, N I. Yeah. So well I mean maybe I write one step more. So G A B uh, N A, you got N B. N B. B. It's just N I. Yeah. Well, but but this N lower I is different from an upper I, right? And because we have a uh, G I J, G I J. So G I J is not is not one. It's a general metric. Um, all right. So now G I J. It is G A B. Okay, so I, 
Okay. And this is uh, it equals the qij. So I will call this quantity qij. Yeah, this is just the ij component of the space time metric. But this qij uh, is also the induced metric, the components of the induced metric on sigma. Induced metric on sigma. And here, the, the induced metric, remember that. Uh, QAB equals to GAB uh, plus NA and B. Okay, so um, we have did we have done this calculation calculation before. So and if you uh, consider the spatial components of this uh, QAB, well the component the spatial components of the QAB equals to the spatial components of the of of, um, of GIJ of GAB. Yeah. The reason is that and if you making contraction with NA. N a and partial partial x i, you just get zero. So second term doesn't contribute. So so g i j equals to q i j. All right. So so now that's that's all the components of uh, g a b. So here we can say uh, we can see that um, g mu nu. So all the components, so all the data. So if you view this um, uh, the matrix, the four dimensional matrix are a set of data, a set of fields, g mu nu. Okay, and now we can trans sort of uh, reparameterize this g mu nu into a set of different quantities. So firstly n, and then n i, and q i. Okay, so the the data of g mu nu, after you do this kind of three plus one decomposition, um, you decompose g mu nu into a different set of data. Uh, firstly, the lapse function, and secondly, the shift vector, and also the spatial matrix. So you can view these are the three plus one uh, data of four matrix, four dimensional matrix. Okay. Um, then these the s square, the the line element is minus n square p q square plus q i j and i p q. This is the I four uh, line element uh, in four dimension. Okay, um, so so here uh, again, as I mentioned before, so this is like you specify the time coordinate. So here in this, uh, which means you specify what is space and what is time, and in this specification, the metric uh, written in this specific specific form. Uh, but of course, um, these these three plus one data is equivalent to a four dimensional metric, but they are equivalent because um, you have gauge freedom. Yeah? And, and, uh, but yeah, you have gauge freedom. So here is basically you, you, you have a specific choice of, um, at least a specific choice of class of uh, coordinate system. Yeah? And you only work on this kind of uh, coordinate system in the Hamiltonian analysis. And then uh, it, of course, breaks the gauge invariant of uh, general relativity, breaks the gauge freedom of the general relativity. Um, so this breaks break the diffeomorphism invariant, diffeomorphism uh, invariant. Uh, of, of GR. Yeah. So before you have diffeomorphism invariant, uh, but uh, now you specify a specific coordinate. Yeah, all the all the following discussion depend on this specific coordinate. Uh, but this kind of uh, gauge invariant um, will be recovered as well. So here, although it's like we, we break it, but in the end we will somehow get it back. Well, you will see uh, how you get it, sort of get it back. So these three columns. Okay. Okay. Um, now, so so now let's come back to einstein hilbert action.
Okay, so uh, temporarily uh, for, for, for the discussion, I'm going to ignore the boundary term and also ignore the cosmological constant here. So I'm going to ignore temporarily uh, ignore uh, lambda and boundary term. Boundary term. Okay, so I'm, which means in all the following discussions, I'm whenever I see a boundary term, I will just ignore them. But in the end, somehow I will I will try to get them back. Uh, okay, so now let's. Uh, so what what we need to do is just plug in uh, this metric uh, into this Einstein-Hilbert action, and there are some. Uh, so I'm, of course, these calculations uh, is can be done, and this calculation will be messy if you do by hand, but it will be very easy if you, for example, plug in Mathematica and, and let Mathematica do the computation. So here, I am just going to give you the result and skip all the detail uh, computations, and you need to fill the gap by yourself. So, so firstly, there are two, so basically the result is two uh, useful formula. formula uh, so firstly, minus g, if you, this is just a determinant of this metric, minus determinant of the metric uh, take the square root. And this just gives you n multiply square root. <coughs> okay, so, uh, by the way, so this n will be, we will consider this lapse function always positive, always positive. Um, so from here, you can see that uh, we choose the time direction such that an all the normals are, so, so time direction is future directed and all the normal vectors are also future directed, future oriented. Uh, so, so this lapse function is always positive. So here we are going to assume all, all the time that this lapse function is positive. Yeah, so that's why you can take this uh, n outside the square root. And inside square root is the determinant of uh, induced metric. And uh, the, the induced metric is positive definite. Yeah. So, uh, you, you just take the square root with no absolute value. Um, secondly, um, you have, uh, so this r, you can also plug in r. So in the end, r minus g. So I'm just going to give you the result. Uh, if you plug in this metric. Some boundary term. But, uh, as I said, I don't worry about the terms, so I'm not going to write it explicitly. Boundary term. Okay, so explain those quantities. Um, so, firstly, uh, these are R3, this is just a three dimensional uh, scalar curvature. So, three dimensional. Ricci scalar. Um, of the induced metric of QAD. Right? Um, okay. And this KIJ, yeah, these are the um, extrinsic curvature. So, um, so I'm going to write the formula for this. So Qij equals to one half n inverse Qij dot minus two and symmetric. Okay, and here this Qij. So here you see this uh, Qij dot is just uh, the ordinary uh, time derivative, partial derivative of QIJ. Yeah. So QIJ is the induced metric on, on sigma, but, but sigma uh, depends on t. Uh, sigma, you have different time slides. Uh, so sigma depends on t, so this QIJ also depends on t. Yeah. So you can make the time derivative, you can, you can make the time derivative uh, on, on QIJ. And, and this uh, QIJ is a component of the extrinsic curvature. 
And so we have, when we talk about hyperservice, we have discussed the calculation of strings of code. If you apply that, you will get this KIJ. Okay, and this K is just the trace of KIJ equals to QIJ. Okay, um, so uh, there, is, uh, there is also this, uh, this D, this DI. This DI is a uh, it's a covariant derivative on sigma. So da is a covariant derivative uh, on sigma. So this is a spatial covariant derivative. This is not a space-time covariant derivative. The previous nabla, uh, nabla a was the uh, space-time covariant derivative, but this dA is just a covariant derivative on sigma, and this dA is also compatible to the metric Q B C, but compatible compatible to to the uh, spatial metric so dA Q B C equals to zero. Okay, now, and so I think that's all the explanation of quantities. Uh, so um, I can write plug in the Einstein Hilbert action, what we get is the following. So here I'm I think in the following I'm going to take uh, kappa just to simplify the formula kappa equals to one. Yeah, set of units of set kappa equals to one. Okay, and uh, then equals to C C C X and where would determine Q All right. So, uh, well, I'm here. It is your homework to do make make all the steps in in detail. So this is your homework. Write this. You write this. Okay. So what you need to do is just uh, uh, take the original Einstein Hilbert action and uh, well uh, plug in this and do the and okay. So just to write this. This is your homework. Um, all right. So, so now um, you see these, uh, we have expressed the, all the quantities in the einstein hubel action in terms of the data, uh, in terms of this set of data, in terms of the, the three plus one data of, uh, of four metrics. Okay, uh, so now we, say, we, we take those data as uh, our so-called position variable. Position variable, okay, and our position variable is QIJ and N and an I. Okay. All right. So this is our position variable, the the spatial metric, uh, the lapse function. 